sorry about the delay. So, uh, here's Jack. Wow. Oh, the dragons. I can't believe I'm in front of the dragons for the first time ever. Well, I'm here on behalf of David Field, who's setting up a company called Virtual Puppet, and it uses technology like the sort of technology you're seeing right here. Virtual Puppet is offering you 30% stake in the company for £200,000. Virtual Puppet has an exclusive license to market this system with all the integral operating systems that make what you're seeing here possible. To my left you have Ali, Ali Cord. He actually invented this system. Um, and that's really it, actually. That's about the long and the short of it. Okay, thank you. Puppeteer David Field and motion capture specialist Ali Cord need a £200,000 investment to market their innovative system, which instantly animates cartoon characters. Weaving David's alter ego into the pitch has certainly grabbed the dragon's attention but it's left Duncan Bannatyne frustrated as to what the business is actually about. So you put these contraptions on yourself and you stand behind the screen and you become a cartoon character? That's right, yeah. Why? It's a new medium of communication, really. It's great fun, but many people have tried to do it for years. It has been done, but computer processing power is only really now available on a mass market to make this affordable. We so it's affordable? It is affordable. OK. What does it cost? Um, we're marketing this system for um, £20,000. That's very affordable, isn't it? What's it cost you before you sell it for £20,000? 10000 uh, 400 So it costs you 10000 you sell it for 20000 Mm-hmm. Who's your customer? Well, we're gearing it towards um, branding companies, experiential marketing companies, um, exhibition organisers, um, you know, um, high street or department stores. But how many of these contraptions have we sold? Well, we're just bringing it to market now. Let me, let me answer my own question. Okay. okay. And you tell me if I got it right. Mm -hmm. You've sold none. No, I've got, I've got book. Uh, we've got... Oh, we, you've sold none. OK, I've sold none, but I've... Yeah, you're right. OK, we've sold none. But it's not just the units, it's actually having characters. Where this is a multiple. Oh, I see, I'm sorry. When you said this was affordable, yeah. and then you told me it was £20,000, I yeah. assumed it was £20,000 and somebody could buy it and could do all the things with it. So now it's £20,000, plus you have to buy characters or something. Absolutely. I prefer looking at the character than you. I'm actually, yeah, I'm listening to go him. Behind, <laughs> go behind the screen. Just stay right. there. And, and do it from behind the screen, because I think yeah. it'd be probably more interesting. Um, okay. See if you can do the whole pitch behind the screen. Do you really want me to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. The dragons might be warming to David's gremlin, but they're struggling to grasp how a setup this expensive will ever secure significant sales. If I buy this system for twenty thousand pounds, yeah. do I get a character with it for free? You do, yeah. We design a character, yeah. One character. Yeah. If I want more characters, how much? It really depends on what you want. We've got... If you really want this conversation to continue, yeah. you're going to have to be very, very precise. we we'll stop using all this. It depends. Guys, I'm going to come out, because I, I really need to... It Just really does take, depend on no, no, how no, many, no. what character you want. No, 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 listen to me. Yeah. Just do averages, right? OK. So we can all 8, make... Pounds. Otherwise, we can't make a decision. So a character would cost 8,000-ish pounds. Yeah. So you're actually pricing yourself out the market. But it goes down. The, the thing is, he's, gonna, he's the first guy who's tried to make uh, content. Hey, 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 hey. Who else does this, guys? As a whole? Yeah. Uh, nobody. Who's capable of doing it? Um, really nobody, because all the other systems that do this mocap, they need a stationary triangulation system, which this is not. This, you can just wear it and go wherever. OK. So You're us... telling me nobody can duplicate your, your little movement sensors? Yeah, Absolute right. rubbish. Right, I'll date myself. Okay. You've got no exclusivity of product. You might have that product, but not other products. Okay, I accept that. All you are is a selling agent, David. Yeah. And you could be competing against ten other selling agents yeah. in the market there. And on top of that, you want to take two hundred thousand pounds of my children's inheritance <laughs> for thirty percent of nothing. 
I don't think it's nothing. I... It's enjoyable. It's not a business opportunity for me. So you're not going to get my children's money. OK. And I'm out. Theo Pafitis disagrees with the entrepreneur's claims and it's pushed him away from any potential investment. Peter Jones can contain himself no longer either. Why? 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 Why would anybody want this? Why? Because it's fantastic. But who's going to spend £20,000 to have that in their house? Big companies spend so much more than that. Oh. Can I ask you more specifically? Oh. Yeah. Tell me, who do you think is your biggest market? Who is going to be the biggest buyer of this product? Do you mind if I turn the voice down yeah, while I turn just... Yeah, um, Well, in the first place, we're gearing it towards branding companies, experiential marketing companies. So, branding, branding companies. Branding companies. Uh, what is a branding big. company? Branding company is someone who's defining what a company is in terms of how they're seen by okay, the general I understand public. That. Now, what would a branding company do with this product? Branding companies really need, at the moment, to jump into the 21st century. They need to bring their printed ideas to life. They need to, they need to have interactive marketing systems that, are just, that, that come to life, basically. Okay, and this I'm is still confused. So I'm a private equity house. I'm imagining I'm going to buy this. Mm -hmm. So my branding companies come mm -hmm. to me. They've recommended this. So how am I going to use this to promote my company? You could actually have a character that actually talks to the public, gets feedback, has fun with the public. I, I don't get it. OK. David's in trouble. He's failing to convince the remaining dragons that there's a lucrative market for the virtual puppet. Now, Duncan Bannatyne's curious about the puppeteer himself. David, tell me about your life as a puppeteer. I sell puppets on the street. What kind of puppets? I sell um, monkeys, I sell birds, I sell marinettes, I sell, I sell all sorts of puppets. Has he made a living? I wouldn't say make a brilliant living. But you get by? Yeah, I get by. And you think this is going to make your fortune? I think this is, yeah. I think this is a fantastic system. It's not. I, I think, think it you is. should continue, David, to sell puppets on the street. Uh, I'm out. Right, David Alley. Um, I'm going to take you from the virtual world to the real world. OK. <laughs> nice, quirky, fun. The issue is the fact that I don't think you're going to make money. So I question the whole application where I started before. Why? And that's why I won't invest in you today. OK. And I'm out. The duo's pitch is crumbling. Only two dragons now stand between them and expulsion from the den. Will James Kahn throw them the lifeline they so badly need? The only thing I've come up with in my mind is two observations. One is, I'm having a kiddies party, got 20 kids in a room, got a plasma, and your puppet can talk to the kids. Well, no one's going to blow 20 grand on a kids party with an interactive puppet, or you're going to have a plasma in a reception where the, the puppet it talks to people. I can't see where somebody would pay twenty to thirty thousand pounds, including the eight thousand add-on for the character. So I think it is not a business viable proposition. For that mm -hmm. reason, I'm out. Four dragons out. It's all but over for David and Ali. But Deborah Meaden still wants some answers. Give me one place you would see one of those being put. In the high street? In, All right. in, in... If I was trying to get national brand recognition, how many high streets would I have to be in with that character interacting to make a difference? Well, it, it, I don't think it would work like that, exactly like that, because I could see, you know... Uh... So how many? Would it be quite a lot? But what you, what you must understand as you well... You see, you it... are guessing the answer, and you're trying to avoid answering the question, because the question answers your issue, where would this actually be applied? We can, we can apply it in... It's, it, the applications are really quite enormous. But just give me one. Um, advertising. No, no, where? Where do you actually where? see one of those sitting and making a okay, substantial well, effect on brand? OK, well, we've got one booking at the moment. It's to create a digital character that welcomes all the people into a big photographic imaging um, seminar. That's cute. To That's the great. character. That's great. That's lovely. That is not a big market. 
do you know, I, I almost don't want to be critical because this is fun and this is great, but it's one of those things you look at and you can have a bit of a laugh at and think, oh, that's, you know, that's different, but it's not a business. You don't think so, it's a business? No, I don't. I'm afraid there's just not enough in it. So okay. I'm out. You're out. Thanks, guys. David and Ali are leaving empty-handed. The Dragons liked the technological breakthrough, they just didn't think it was a money spinner. Well, good afternoon. My name's David Pybus. I'm looking for £80,000 for a 20% share in my company. I'm a qualified chemist and marketeer. I'm an author of best-selling books of the genre, which is perfumery. And I'm an aromancer, a dealer in aromas. I'm also known by the media as the Indiana Jones of the business, because what I do is look for perfumes lost in time find them, rediscover them, recreate them, and get them ready for the market. I have a range of 15 perfumes. They are created by a billion dollar perfume company that I work for as a consultant. So they are top-notch fragrances, and we're talking A-list celebrities here. We're talking fragrance from the debris field of Titanic. The fragrance of Blue Lotus, which is the perfume of Cleopatra, which has a hallucinogen in it. You can't get it from smelling it, but I reckon that's what she used on Mark Antony and um, Caesar. I'm looking conservatively for less than a tenth of a percent of the global market, which is 15 billion pound. I've got around six routes to market, two major retail routes, another which is more prestige fragrance uh, that I'm developing, uh, home selling in America, where I have contacts, and um, internet is a, is a consideration. And finally, I have a, a national newspaper, non-tabloid, that is interested in a readership offer based on the sense of time, perfumes lost in time. All I can say, Dragons, is if you work with me, you really will come up smelling of roses. Thank you. It's rare for perfumes to appear in the den. Many entrepreneurs stay clear of such a competitive market dominated by global brands. David Pybus is convinced there's a niche for his glamorous historical replicas. But can he persuade the Dragons to pay £80,000 for 20% of this unusual business? Tell us about you. Where did you come from? What have you been doing? How did you get involved in this? OK. Well, as I say, I'm a chemist. I've been involved in the business of chemistry all my life with three big blue chip companies. The last one is a billion dollar fragrance company. How long were you there for? 20 years. Right, and you left? As part of that, when I read in the year 2001 that they'd found a bag of perfumes on board Titanic, my heart went like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. And I realized if, if I came back from America with this, we could recreate it. While we were looking at that, I read that they'd found a complete perfumer's house buried in Pompeii. And I went out to Pompeii, I worked with botanists and archaeologists there to see what he was growing. While you were working for this company? Yes. David might have successfully resurrected scents from the past, but marketing expert Deborah Meaden is more interested in the potential profits for any investor. You talked about routes to market and you've got two major, yes. two major retailers on board. I'm in debate with World Duty Free, which has 23% of all perfume sales in the United Kingdom and who I teach creative perfumery to, so I have an established relationship. And I'm in negotiation with, with Boots. Boots, major retailer, where are you with them? Just really exchange of communications with what them. What does that mean? Telephone calls, you've got a letter from them? So Telephones it. and emails where they're considering it. Well, hold on, have you had a meeting with them? I'm sorry? Have you had a meeting with Boots? No, I, I, I have to say my have weakness on this... My weakness on this is I do not have an established route to market yet. I have a great product. That's a pretty big weakness, David. Particularly for somebody who started off saying I'm a perfumery and a marketeer. 
Davids unwittingly exposed his business naivety and the Dragons are immediately suspicious. Can he rescue his pitch by winning the Dragons over with the perfumes themselves? I think that's revolting. Do you? I'm sorry, but I do. The thing is, Duncan, with perfume as well, you need to let it develop. It's a bit like a Beethoven's fifth where you hear da 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 da, <laughs> and, you, <laughs> da, da, da and you haven't got the rest of the symph symphony. Yeah, I think it, it needs a dry down. Th that, if you give that, and we can't give it, but if you give that 10 minutes, smell it later, it develops into a nice fragrance. OK. Uh, when I buy perfume for my lady, I go into the chemist and I choose one that I like. Now, I don't really care how old it was, whether it was reinvented or whether it was done with Titanic. People have a desire to learn more about I, I would think I would think the people who want to learn more are a very, very small percentage of the market. Wouldn't you say so? A small percentage of the market is what I'm looking for, point, what, point 0.1 per cent of the market. David's enthusiasm for his perfumes might be charming the dragons, but can he persuade them to invest £80,000? Peter Jones has concerns around who actually owns the scents. Do you and the company that you're looking for investment for own the intellectual property rights of this perfume? Yes. Can I, ex can I expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Is that a yes, then, and you'll expand on it? It is a yes, yeah. And, and in, in, our, in the nature of our business is the following. You develop a fragrance, co-invent through a brief, and, and the business is done. If the fragrance company decides it didn't want to do it anymore, you get the formula. Do, so do is this a contractual a arrangement or a gentleman's what? agreement you have? Well, we're looking, now that I'm actually coming out of the consultancy by the end of March, we're looking at putting a contract together. By the end of March, I might have to look at renegotiating that position. Do you know, David, everybody else might have got it, but I have not got this. I'm sorry, I still Deborah, do I'm, I'm not, not understand clear, your okay. relationship. I haven't got it. Because it sounds to me like you're standing in front of us uh, trying to get us to invest into a business that doesn't actually have any kind of arrangement with somebody who were part of developing the product. Well, that contract's being done now. You know, we're putting it together. Uh, we've been working three well, years. Well, David, can you stop being so obtuse? I mean, can Sorry. you just tell me the terms of the contract? I don't have a written hard contract. David's been blasted by an infuriated Deborah Meaden. Is this eccentric entrepreneur's charming but informal approach to business about to prove his undoing in the den? David, I, I need to tell you where I am. I, I mean, forgive my frustration, because I think you're actually a very nice guy and you clearly know your stuff. But I can't invest in something that is a wing and a prayer that is actually not... It, it's, it's nothing. There is no legal standing, no contract. But there will and be, I'd, Well, there will be. It, there isn't. I don't know the ter and I don't know what those terms will be, and neither do you, David, and you can't stand here and say you do because you don't know what those terms will be. So I'm afraid it just doesn't give me anything. So for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. This is a blow for David. He has bewildered the dragons over who owns the rights to the scents, him or the manufacturers. But now Theopophetus steps in to try and help clear up the confusion. I go to them, I give them a brief. I want a perfume to smell just like my old socks. Right. So I give them a, one of my old socks, they create it. Yes. Right, now, I now want to make it into perfume because I think everyone's going to love it. Who then owns the intellectual rights to that smell? You do. I do. They would not sell that to another company. Right. That's your smell. I do. Like. How do they get remunerated? By selling to you. In volume? Yes. The Dragons have finally been convinced that David will have potentially lucrative rights within his business, as well as interest from the UK's biggest perfume retailer. Peter Jones is quick to seize the initiative. I think if, if I was to invest in your business, um, I could tell you that, that I'd make sure that you would be locked in the lab. I, w I wouldn't let you out. Um, Why and is I, that? Because I think what would happen is, from a marketing perspective, you would make things a lot more complicated 
um, than they actually are. That being said, I think what you've got is potentially could be, if it's positioned correctly, very, very, very successful. Because I do think people are looking for this little piece of time out of the novelty factor. Um, so to that extent, I am going to offer you half the money. But I'm going to offer you half the money for 20% of your business because I think you're going to need a little bit of support in the commercial ar arena trying to negotiate these types of contracts. Uh, th thank you for the offer. M may, I, may I consider that? W the concern I have yeah. about that is... Um, is at that rate, at that rate, I could lose 40% of my business if, if one yep. of the other dragons offers the same. And knowing you guys, you always try and beat the other. So it is a concern to me, those figures. In an unexpected twist, Peter Jones has offered David half the £80,000 investment, but for double the equity originally on offer. And under the rules of the den, David must now persuade one of the three remaining dragons to invest, or he'll still leave with nothing. My original thought was that this could actually be quite valuable because if there are so many perfumes out there, you know, product differentiation becomes really important. And if you can say, well, Cleopatra used to wear this perfume, and you get a celebrity behind it, you know, and you, you do it the right way, then that might be enough to push your perfume up against the thousands and thousands of others. So it's it could believe, be very yeah. valuable. Let's say we took Cleopatra and we took it off to Yves Saint Laurent and we said, here's, here's, Cleopatra was wearing this, why don't you get behind it, get some beautiful actress to endorse it, you know, we'll charge you a penny a bottle or, you know, I mean... Well, they could, but it doesn't, Yves Saint Laurent, as I say, they've got a stable, they've got a character, they've got a, it, it just doesn't gel with companies like this. So you think with £80,000 we're going to take on Yves Saint Laurent? Well... And everybody else. I don't believe you'll get it to market for £80,000. So for that reason, I'm going to declare myself out. OK? Yeah, £80,000 to launch a, a, a range of perfume is not enough. So I wish you luck, but I'm out as well. Really? David is on the brink of disaster. His only chance of salvaging an investment now rests with retail magnate Theo Pafitis. I'm going to ask you to just spend 30 seconds, no longer, right, without talking. Right, in a minute, when I say start, I right, really think carefully now. This, this is an important question. OK. Is there anything else that you can think of that's going to tip me over the edge to say yes to you, that's going to alleviate my concern about actually getting this product into the market. OK, in the retailers that I'm talking to, I think I can develop both of those retail situations. I just believe that from the nature of the business and from the relationship I have at least with one of them. I would have to put more money into point of sale because that, you know, if you, there's 30 million people going through Heathrow. You've got to attract their eyes uh, with, a, with some sort of display. So I, th I think that would be the nature of the promotion. Right. Have I not answered that well to you? I'm sorry. Have I, I think heard? that's the best he answer has, you've given all yeah, bloody it's, day. It's very good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and on that basis, I'm going to give you the other £40,000 for 20%. So you now have an offer. Are you accepting our offer, David? I think it would be good working with you guys. Yeah. Is that a it, yes? Yes, it's a yes. You got a deal. <laughs> Thank you very much. An unpredictable investment, but also a popular one, as the Aramancer who bemused the dragons walks away with an £80,000 investment. Mind the step. Well done, Theo. Well done, Theo and Peter. Goodness gracious me. There was something in that perfume thing. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Indiana Jones, we're going to go on some journeys with him. Yeah. It was, yeah I hope it isn't the Temple of Doom. I 
am flabbergasted, David. I didn't think you had a chance halfway through that. They were tearing their hair out. <laughs> Can you just tell me the terms of the contract? Are you pleased with the offer? You've given away a big chunk for £80,000. I think I've part sold my sell, but this might have been, as was said, the last chance saloon. This, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen with, with dragons. And I've got two great people to work with. Are you accepting our offer, David? You think you'll get on with these guys? You're going to be able oh, to work yeah. with them? And my promise is that I am confident I can have a deal that will make them comfortable about this whole thing of I own it, the company support it. If they're not interested, I get the formulae. It's going to be a fascinating one to watch. OK, well thank you done. very much. Hello there. My name's Colin Bruton, and I'm the proud owner of Fellas Products Limited. I am here today to ask for £60,000 for 20% of my business. Fellas is a British male grooming brand. My launch product was Fellas Wipes. They are intimate cleansing wipes for men. They're just a nice way of guys helping to keep their anatomy clean throughout the day. That's right, gentlemen, they are for your bits and pieces. But ladies, fear not, there will be no live demonstrations today. <clears throat> They're individually wrapped, free from alcohol and all artificial fragrances. I'm selling via my website around the world. And I think the investment will be good for any dragon and hopefully give you a return of 750000 over the next five years. Thank you very much for your time. And any questions, please? Can I have a look at a pack, please? Of course you can, yeah. And if I give you a stream, pass it down. A rather awkward pitch, for a number of reasons, from Staffordshire-based Colin Bruton. He needs £60,000 to fund his expansion plans for his male toiletry business. It's an interesting one for Deborah Meaden. Hello, Colin. Um, I didn't wake up this morning expecting to be talking about um, gentlemen's intimate wipes. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, let's talk about the business model. Mm. What are you turning over at the moment? I've been trading 11 months and I've turned over £4,000. OK. And how much have you lost in that I've 11 months? I've put in uh, £30,000 of my own money and £20,000 of a loan. And do you have any cash? at the moment? Yes, I do, yeah, about £1,500. OK, so is there anything in the product itself that is proprietary? No, I'm not May asking... I? I'm asking a technical question sure. now, not what does it look like. Okay. I'm asking you, is there something unique about the product itself? It's my own formula, which is a Chilean uh, soap bark extract. OK, but is there anything you could protect in that, or There's is that no, just I, a readily...? I can't protect it. The only thing I can protect is the branding, which is what I've done throughout the EU. OK. Collins clearly thought about protecting the product, but what of the man behind the concept? Theo Pafitis wants to know. I'm Theo. Who's Colin? Who's Colin? Yeah. I left school when I was 16. I joined the Royal Navy. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. I, I actually got a medical discharge. OK. I set up my first company in 1997. I sold that in 2000. I had an idea for some uh, wipes. And uh, I sold my house and used the money um, to invest in fellas. Who else is out there competing in this market? Uh, Wingman is one company, but they are a different wipe. Col Colin, can I disagree with you? Because I do know this product. They look very similar. What's their turnover? I don't know. I don't know that. But they, they don't, I don't see them as a competitor. So you feel that there was enough market for both of you? Yes. But you don't know how well they're doing or whether they've found a market, whether they're successful or they're not successful, or there's no market at all? I've gotten far too much interest for there not to be well, a market. With all me. due respect, you've turned over £4,000. I understand that. That's but not that's, a lot of interest. I know it's not, but I see my biggest market is actually the States. OK. I'm just about to sign a deal uh, for the, the uh, two guys in Florida 
uh, to actually uh, their initial order of $23,000. The uncomfortable atmosphere shows no sign of abating, but will the revelation of a sizeable order change all that? Duncan Bannatyne has something on his mind. Connie, earlier this year I spent a week living in a tent on a mountain where there was no showers, and, and we washed ourselves using the same wipes you use on a baby. Mm. But, you know, I think it's very difficult to use these when every time you use them you have to open them individually. So I want you to tell me where the customer is who needs an individually wrapped one of these to use in a specific situation. I have truck drivers uh, buy them from me who say they use them when they've been driving. So the truck driver... I have... Wait a minute, Colin. The truck driver's in his truck. I he can, have... Wait a minute, let me... He can use in his truck some of the big bags. He doesn't have to have a single one. The whole idea is that they're mobile. Well, you see... Colin, Gentlemen, Colin, I, Colin, I, Colin, I, Colin, I, Colin, I Colin just... let me tell you something, let me tell you something. When you sell a product, you have to listen to the customer who's going to buy the product. Exactly. Now, I... you're not listening to me, and I buy this product. Colin, why on earth did you sell your house without studying the market, studying what market share you could gain? I don't understand. You might as well have taken that money and ripped it up. No, I don't think so at all. I mean, from the really positive conversations I'm having, it's, I, I think, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this order. I've got, you know, emails to prove that the order's going to come through from the States. I, I've launched a brand new brand and a, a brand new concept. So I understand. It is not a brand new concept. I were using baby wipes on my son's bits and bobs 25 years ago. For I'm, I'm sorry, I disagree. I just disagree because well, they all are, I can are, say, Colin, aims. is yeah. But how how do you carry? How does a man, oh, Colin, a young man, carry a bag of baby wipes around with him? I've got to say, you look very presentable. I think your brand is brilliant, good brand name, but you clearly have done no research on this market. I'm out. <laughs> Perhaps inevitably, Colin receives a first blow to his investment dreams. And it doesn't look like his luck is going to change with Peter Jones. Colin, I think if you manage to get the order and you get potential orders after that, it doesn't necessarily make it a business that is investable. And I'm wishing and hoping that you don't get that order because I think it's going to make you think that you're onto something. And from Theo's questioning, I'm sitting here thinking, you're probably too late to market, because your, your first mover advantage has been taken away from you. I'm sorry, I disagree. But that's why it makes it a totally uninvestable opportunity. And that's why I'm out. OK. You know, sometimes people find it hard to start a business. But something that's much, much harder is to admit to yourself that you made a huge mistake. The product doesn't sell, it won't sell. And only you are prevent yourself from moving on to do something else. And you've got to really do that. I'm sorry, but this is not a product that's going to make any money. So I'm not going to invest. I'm out. Two more dragons out. And despite Colin's fervent belief in his product, he can't seem to get that across to the experienced investors. Will Deborah Meaden be more understanding? I would like you to do one thing for me. I would like you to absolutely promise me that if this order does not come through, you will seriously consider stopping yeah. this business. Yeah. Now, I appreciate that. I, know, I do understand. I, I understand that you're saying it for genuine reasons. I won't be investing, I so I'm out. Let, let me just tell you, rule one in starting a business is do your homework. Understand the market. 50% of all new startups fail incredibly quickly because people, and I use the word carefully, are delusional. 
You need to stop and listen. You're not investable. This is not something I can invest in. So I'm going to help you now by saying, I'm out. OK. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. It's a case of tough love for Colin. He got no cash, but he did receive some genuine words of warning from the dragons. He leaves with nothing. Um, my name is Alex Hall. I'm the founder of The Big O. Uh, we're looking for £150,000 worth of investment for a 15% stake in our company. Um, about three and a half years ago, um, I saw a niche in the market for a pre-packed, marinated, delicatessen-style olive to put alongside crisps and peanuts for the... Um, pub and bar market. We wanted to build an olive brand as KP is to peanuts, Walkers is to crisps, we wanted to be the big O <coughs> is to olives. And had it not been for major teething problems with our Spanish suppliers, we'd be well on our way to achieving our business plan. <sighs> Numbers wise, um, our plan wants to deliver 4.5 million turnover within three years. And that's actually incredibly conservative. Alex is looking for £150,000 and is prepared to give away 15% of her company. Dragon's Den rules dictate she must get at least what she asks for or she won't get a penny. So, tell me, how have you funded Guile. getting to this stage? I've got a business brain, you know, I'm always thinking of ideas. Um, and I got a prototype pot made for nothing and said, I want olives in here with a six month shelf life. Who designed the um, tree? Me. You designed the tree, so you own the rights to that tree? Yeah. All, all this design's been registered and trademarked? Yes, yeah, uh, the pole and the dispenser is patented. With the packaging finished and the patents in place, the business seems promising. And new dragon Theo Pafitis is clearly enjoying the taste of the product. Doug Richard, though, wants to know more about the market for the Big O. Did I understand that your inspiration for the product and the way it's designed and the packaging and the ease of use, it, you said you wanted to be right next to the other sort of snacks that one gets when they're buying a it beer. Was the inspiration was for the pub and bar market. So can you just talk me through what evidence you currently have, what level of success you've had in reaching that pub and bar market? Uh, right, well, yes, I mean, I can. Um, Good. The phone rings all day and we don't have any product to sell them. <laughs> That, it's a lovely, that's, that's a lovely anecdote, but I was actually looking for a little more <laughs> sort of substance than that. No, no, well, you'll get more substance. Um, Basically, I don't know, what do you want to know, big names? I'm just looking to know that your product is actually being used by a customer that they like and that there's okay. some sort of evidence to support that. Real yeah. straightforward question. Um, <laughs> well, I can, yes, I mean, it is straightforward, although our sales don't reflect uh, what the company could do because we've had inconsistent suppliers. You still have so many, how many of these one pop sales in a week? I, sorry, I can't answer that question so directly because it's so different. You know, you might get your country village pub that's selling one every three days, right? But you might get your busy city pub that will be selling 48 in a day. It varies. I mean, e and well, average. How many of these is one pub? We, is it 10 uh, or is it 100? One. One a day. Alex has finally given the dragons an answer, but it's not the one they were looking for. The big O may look good, but its slow sales have astonished the dragons, and the business looks fragile. 
In spite of her resistance, Theopophetus is determined to find out how these sales translate into revenue. Alex, when did you start supplying bars? Uh, November 2003. Right, 2003. And what's been the turnover of sales so far? Uh, I can answer that question, but I don't think it's that relevant because we've had very inconsistent supply. It's absolutely relevant. Why? Because I want to know what you've sold since November 2003. In Why, I'm sorry, but that, what, that, the relevance of that, I mean, if we had had continual supply... But you didn't have continual yeah, no, supply. Yeah, no, we didn't, and we haven't been able to get our hands and on enough And how product. much turnover have you done in that time? We have 1,200... Uh, customers on limited, limited, limited supply. Alex, please answer the question. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer that question because yes. it's not relevant. It's not relevant. But it is to me. If you're not right, going to okay. answer my question, then I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Alex's defensive behaviour has cost her the interest of Theopophetes, and it's not endearing her to the rest of the dragons either. Duncan Bannatyne wants some straight answers. Alex, tell me exactly what is the problem you had with your Spanish supplier? Explain it. Have you ever dealt with the Spanish? Never. Right. <laughs> uh, well, is, there, is anyone Spanish here? <laughs> um, dishonesty uh, might be number one, key, key number. In what way? One. Well, they'd say things or put something in the product that shouldn't be in the product and wouldn't let us know. Uh, so it wouldn't be on the label, and it was just totally dishonest. Alex is on a collision course. She needs £150,000, but her sweeping statements about the Spanish have pushed Doug Richard over the edge. You really caught me off guard when you maligned an entire nation because one supplier. You really... Uh, it, it makes... You, you sound like a... Uh, you're a wild gun. Telling me that all of the Spanish are dishonest. Have you ever dealt with the Spanish? Um, Yes, I've dealt with honest Spanish and dishonest Spanish. If that's the kind of comment you're willing to make, God only knows what else you'll say. And so I, I lose some faith in your judgment okay. there. Um, so enough. I won't be investing. Doug Richard is out, and things are about to get worse. Alex, if you look deep, deep d down inside yourself, you know this product doesn't sell, and that's your problem. So really, you haven't got a production problem. That's not the problem. It is. You can't we buy don't enough have any because salt. okay, you, okay, okay. I just, you yeah. know, Alex, you just won't listen to anybody. I just don't think you know why you're giving ears, and I'm out. Alex has now lost the interest of three dragons, but she's still refusing to acknowledge their concerns. Only Rachel Elnor and Peter Jones are left, and her bid for the hundred and fifty thousand pound investment is on the verge of collapse. Alex, I'm Peter. I'm sitting here and I'm absolutely baffled. I think it's firstly one of the worst pitches I've seen to date. Sorry. Um, you've mentioned that you've got a business brain. I've yet to see any inclination that you actually know what you're doing. Right. So the biggest problem that I've got is I'm now focusing on somebody that actually I don't want to invest in, regardless of how good this is. So you've completely lost me, you've lost my interest and I'm also out. Rachel Elnor is Alex's last hope. You've come across this incredibly hard work, and this is your pitch. Mm. We are selling yourself and your olive product and your business concept to us. Mm. Business is about problems, and actually one of the biggest tests of a successful entrepreneur is whether you can successfully get over those hurdles or whether they Which we defeat doing. you. Which we're doing. Well, it's two and a half years down the line. You've got through all of your cash, and all you can say is, really, it's, it's the supplier's fault that you haven't created a successful business. Now, actually, I quite like the product, and I personally like olives a lot, and I can see there's a gap in the market. Whether you can actually make it work or not is quite another matter, and that's mm. where I would have the problem in, in investing. So it's, it's not one for me, so I'm out. Alex has been demolished by the dragons, who found that her defensive manner and refusal to divulge the basic details of her business made it impossible for them to invest. I've got to say, that is an example of how not to get an investment. It could be a good product, it was irrelevant because she was such, so, so egotistical, 
the very wrong page. high maintenance. Anybody who is feels comfortable asking whether anybody hears Spanish so she can feel free to slag off an entire nation, it is the mo it is reprehensible behavior. If she behaves like that, she will do other things later that are equally wrong. <laughs>Duncan Bannatine's irritated by Rachel and Alter's reluctance to bring their product to market in its current form. And given their lack of sales, fellow dragon Kelly Hoppen wants to know just how much of a financial sacrifice they've had to make to keep the business afloat. How much money have you actually invested in this? About £130,000. Wow. My goodness. That is a lot of money. I would go and set up a stall in a market down Columbia Road or do something like that. You've got something big there. I can see any child going into a nursery or playroom and sitting down and wanting to play that. It looks great. The problem is it's not selling. It's not a viable um, proposition for me to invest, so I'm out, but good luck with it. That I fully disagree with Kelly and Peter Jones. I'm the truthful dragon, and I'm going to tell you the truth. 
I wrote down one word when I opened it and started using it. And the word I wrote down was rubbish. And you should stop spending your money on it. You've spent too much on it, you can end up with nothing. And I'm out. I disagree with Duncan. I actually, I don't think it's rubbish at all. In fact, I think it's very clever. I urge you, spend no more money, make no more changes, and go and sell the remaining stock you have. I see no upside and I see a lot of risk in you being so committed to making this work that you're not thinking straight. I can only offer you advice and I can't offer you my money today. So I'm afraid I won't be investing and I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. Despite enthusiasm for their product, Rachel and Alter's shortage of sales and the cutthroat nature of the market in which they've chosen to compete mean they walk away from the den with nothing. Leaving the dragons to continue heatedly debating the merits of busy bits. The truth dragon called it rubbish. It's two bits of plastic like that with this little connector on here and you can't really find anything to connect it to. It's complete and utter rubbish. You've got to have something in here to be able to play it. That's what your boxes? issue. <laughs>